it's Miss Alex, and we're again talking about Zaha Hadid, and we're going to compare real life pictures to the pictures in our book to see how well they match up and just to see what she really made and to understand her style. So this is Zaha Hadid herself next to the front cover of the book about her, and she does look like her picture. She has a very um, different style of clothing, and you'll see more of that near the end of this slideshow. So on this page, she remembered the grasses and the marshes swaying, and she wants to see the tall buildings dancing like the grass. Well, she did this at the Signature Towers in Dubai and the United Arab Emirates, and she built a business bay for offices, a hotel, and even houses. So that's what this is used for. Next, she remembers the wind in the dunes and feels it blowing over and around through her desert building. So this is the desert building, and I want you to pay attention to the amount of sand and imagine a windstorm coming. Because um, on this next page, oh, we have our map. So this, again, is over in the Middle East, over by Africa. And this is the building in a sandstorm. So this is the BIA headquarters in Sharjah, United Arab Emirates. And it's an environmental and waste management um, facility and headquarters. So um, she won a competition in order to do that building, in order to create it. She couldn't just go up and say, I want to build this building. There was a huge competition held by the company so that they could find the best person for the job. So this is it when it's sunny. There's no sand out and about. And um, you can see these carports. So that protects the cars from the damage from the weather and um, also the people who are trying to get to their cars. And imagine how hot it would get in this, in this sun all day. They have to protect their cars from the heat or they wouldn't be able to drive them. So then Zaha looks at shells and craters, cradles her stadium like a cocoon. Now, this is actually the Al Wakra Stadium in Qatar, and she was commissioned for this by the people that were in charge of the World Cup in Qatar for 2022. So the World Cup is a soccer tournament, um, and you'll see the act, and so this is where it is. It's again in the Middle East, um, next to Africa, and we have this actual stadium. So this is what it looks like from the outside and up above. So if you were a bird flying over this building, this is what it would look like. And it does kind of look like a shell. Now, Zaha looks at stones in a stream and builds an opera house like the pebbles in the water. And this is the Gangsa Opera House. So the Gangsa Opera House is in Gangsa, China. And it is a opera house, so it's for music. And it opens up to the riverside and the dock, so water can make music sound really pretty. And it's a really awesome sound if there's music coming from the opera, and then it's bouncing off the water or traveling through the water to the person listening. So as you can see, this is the inside of the opera house from the book. And the singer is the pearl in the oyster shell, is what the book said. So let's see the inside. This is the inside of the opera house, and it looks exactly like the picture. It has holes in it that let the light filter through, kind of like a lantern. So the whole building becomes a lantern that throws light around. So you can see the light falling underneath the chairs on the picture on the right because it's coming up from below and it's falling. So again, it looks like the inside of a shell or like a wave itself. So next... Zaha looks up at stars and galaxies and sees swirling buildings. And this is actually the galaxy Soho in Beijing, China. Let's see where it is in the world. So as you see, it's in Asia. So this is the building from above. So if we were a bird flying above, this is what the building would look like. And it kind of looks like big eggs or jelly beans. And this is a bunch of offices and retail and an entertainment complex. So this would be places where people could go have fun, enjoy themselves, work, um, and do a lot of their daily routine. So this is what it looks like looking down into it. So you can see it's very curvy. I don't know if we have a lot of buildings in Atlanta that are curvy. Do you remember any? 
this looks very different than what I'm used to seeing. Zaha looks at waves and sees a bridge that moves with the water. So this was our coloring page today. And um, I really liked it because you can see in the way that the waves are moving that the bridge is moving in the same direction. So this is actually the Sheikh Zayed Bridge in Abu Dhabi, United Arab Emirates. And it links the Abu Dhabi Island with the Gulf Shore. And it holds eight roads across. So there's two four-lane highways. So if you were to count the number of roads from one side to the next, it would be eight. So it's a very wide bridge. That's a very big job for her. As you can see, again, we've been in this area before for the Signature Towers, the BIA Headquarters, the Al Walker Stadium. This is the Middle East. So her, built, her bridge, as you can see here, is quite beautiful. And it is really quite interesting because we don't have any bridges like this in Atlanta. I don't know if you've seen them, but I have not in many years. So um, I really, really would love to see you guys um, enjoy your coloring pages because I know that um, this was a really cool project for her as well. So look again, so if you're a bird flying up above it, this is what it looks like. And you can see the eight lanes of cars. So there's actually two bridges that looks two tiny bridges that she built right next to each other with the waves holding the outside and coming into the inside so the waves of the bridge act as a support to keep the bridge together as well as decoration and you can see a not so exciting bridge next to it on the other side that doesn't look as fun as this one in this picture, Zaha looks at the Alps and builds a museum inside a mountain peak with windows to see the sky and the valleys. Now, I couldn't quite see this building and I was kind of confused in the book about it, but then I found out that this is actually the Messner Mountain Museum in the Coronas province of Belzano, South Tyrol, Italy. So this is surrounded by the Dolomite Mountains and it was established by... Um, a mountaineer and a mountaineer is someone who climbs mountains and hikes mountains so they built this as a monument to the history of mountaineering in the mountains so as you're climbing a mountain you can also study the history of climbing a mountain so let's see what it looks like in real life this is where it is so you can see it's in europe and this is the country that alex had her wedding in so i was there um, this summer um, and you guys know your Europe maps a few of you have been working with them in the classroom so this is what it looks like in real life and it kind of looks like it's hiding underneath a rock um, and it looks like three small separate buildings all put together but it's really one building and if you'd like I can show you the inside would you like that so this is what it looks like from the inside. And as you can see, there's artwork on the wall over here that shows a mountain. And it's probably a, a, a mountain that they can see from that window. So as they look out at the window, they can see mountains. They can see the mountains in the painting. And there's also a mountain sculpture behind them. So they're, as you can see how they're dressed, what do you think they're dressed for? They're wearing workout clothes and a water backpack and sunglasses and they look like they're going for a walk or a hike so they climbed up this mountain saw the history of climbing and then kept going so here Zaha's ski jump reaches to the sky like the mountain so this is actually the Bergesell ski jump in Innsbruck Austria and it's not just any ski lift it has a cafe on top and um, it's a giant sporting facility. So it's not just this ramp that she built and I'm gonna show you in the next page. So this is again in Europe. This is the ramp against the mountain. So this is what it would look like if you were far away from it. Maybe um, you could see this if you were a bird but you could also see this if you were far away looking up at the mountain. So this is the top where there's a cafe. And then this is the entirety of the ramp. So this is how the ski jumpers will start. The, they'll, they'll take a ride all the way to the top of the ramp. And then when they get to the top, like a slide, 
they'll be on their skis and they'll slide down that ramp all the way to the bottom. And if I remember correctly, I believe it's the speed and the accuracy of with which you ski. So if you're skiing down this ramp, there might be an obstacle course that you have to go through. Um, there might be a zigzag you have to, to follow or there might be a certain time you're trying to beat. So if maybe you're trying to do it in a certain amount of seconds, like when you guys try to run really fast. On this page, Zaha thinks of the jungle and ancient wood temples and builds wooden buildings to remember a faraway war. So this is the Sleuth Rith Institute in Phnom Penh, Cambodia. And um, this is quite a meaningful building for their um, community because it is a memorial of sorts. And a memorial is something that people make to remember something by, something meaningful, something important that they don't want to forget. Um, and that can be something that's happy and sad. So it could be for someone that did something amazing, or it could be for a lost loved one. So the Sleuth Rith Institute was actually a museum, a research center, a graduate school, and a library. And its focus is for reflection, healing, and reconciliation, which means they want to heal their community. It was to make their community's bucket fill up because their bucket had been emptied by these um, mean people that came in and told them how to run their country. And they were called the Khmer Rouge. So they built this building in order to say, this happened in our history. We don't want to forget it. We want to mem- remember it and honor it in our country so that we remember everything that happens and we can learn from it. Just like we learn lessons in school, they would learn lessons by building buildings. So as you can see, it's here in Asia. So it's all the way over in Cambodia, which um, is a really tiny, tiny country. And um, it's quite beautiful. It's where Miss Alice gets all of her fun pants from and where um, she wanted to live for a long time. But um, if you guys ever get the chance, I highly recommend um, uh, reading any um, fun little stories about Cambodia because it's quite beautiful with the temples and this is an image of the wall. So you can see there's water on the ground. And um, that's quite normal for Cambodia because they have the rainy season. So they would get water piling up in puddles quite regularly. Um, you can also see this is what it looks like from the outside. And it kind of looks like a tree that's growing up. So you can see the, the trunk and the branches up at the very top. So um, as you can see, they also put trees around it. In the picture but here on this side you can't see any so from certain angles it looks like it stands by itself but from far away it looks like it's in a forest of trees now this one is a dream that she had and it is something that she believes is still possible now this represents the new moscow in russia that she designed now that's over here in Russia, up at the top where it gets kind of cold. We've looked at that map before. Now, this is what those buildings would look like. This is her plan for a new world conscious place. So this would be somewhere where they would um, focus on renewable energy, like things that we talked about in What a Waste book and um, everything about Earth Month where we want to do things for the environment. That was her goal, is that this is somewhere that blends in with the environment that could also do good for the environment. So this is what it would look like. The inside. So as you can see, it's very open, lots of windows, and you can see all the greenery growing inside of it. Now, this is really cool. So she wasn't just an architect and a builder of buildings. She liked to make dollhouses, shoes, and chairs. So what she's holding in her hand is a dollhouse, and you can see that in the picture right next to it. It's a very different dollhouse than what we're used to seeing. So I don't even know how you would open this, but I'm pretty sure it looks like it would open a little bit so that you could put your dolls inside. Now, is this a dollhouse that you guys would want or have in your house? Maybe you can make one for your dolls. Maybe you can draw one for your dolls. Now, I said she designed her own shoes and chair. 
This is the chair she's sitting in in the book. This is a chair that she designed and drew and made. Now, we don't have chairs like this in the classroom, but what do you think of it? What's different about it from the chairs that we have in our classroom? What do you like about it? What don't you like about it? Do you think it would be comfy to sit in? Where would your arms rest? These are a pair of shoes that she made. So they're a little different than what we're used to seeing every day. And if you have a mommy or daddy that um, has shoes, I want you to look at their shoes and think, are there lots of holes in them? And wonder about what time of year we would wear those shoes that have lots of holes in them. And um, why they might have those holes in them. And what part might hold your foot in and what part part might let your foot slip out. So these are all questions she had to ask while she was designing the shoe. So this is Zaha Hadid. And I really appreciate you guys. Um listening to me for 44 slides which I think is crazy um but I wanted to show you guys all of her work and where um she originated and what all she accomplished because she is really quite extraordinary and I would love to see what you guys think and if you guys have any drawings that you made of her buildings or anything that you guys want to build in the future because of what she's built so I love you guys see you guys soon